Buenas mañanas, Juan. Buenas mañanas. <whistles> Math sorcerer. Math sorcerer. So this is the calculus test that I just gave. This is the second test in calculus one. Um, and the first question is to find the derivative. So in this question here, I, I put this on there because it's kind of like a, do you know how to find the derivative of these trig functions? So the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent, boom, pretty easy. Now the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared, but there's an x to the fourth here. So you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, right? That's the chain rule. Same thing here, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside, that's the chain rule again. And then I guess the last thing to do would be to put these things in the front like we did here and then over here. So nice, solid question, um, just to see like if people know the derivatives. This one's kind of tricky. This one requires some clever simplification. So I skipped some steps here. So you basically square the three and you square the X and then so you get um, five ninths, and then you have that x squared down there, but when you bring it up, it becomes negative. And then, then you just take the derivative and it's pretty easy. So it's really easy to do this question wrong. I like to try to use the uh, quotient rule, which is fine, but it causes a lot of problems when people do it that way. So um, this is the easiest way to do this problem. There's one more on the first page. Let's go ahead and look at it. There's another one where you want to avoid the um, the quotient rule. So first you rewrite it. So it's x cubed over x to the fourth, boom. x squared over x to the fourth, boom. 19 over x to the fourth, boom. Then you clean it up. Let me see if you can move this so you can see it. And then bring everything upstairs and then take the derivatives and there you have it. So that's the first page of this test. I still have to uh, grade the test, so fun times. Here's another one that's kind of uh, problematic. So we have uh, y equals the sine of xy. You have to find dy dx. So um, you take the derivative of both sides with respect to x, so this will just be dy dx. And then here, the derivative of sine is cosine, right? but then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is xy. So that's a product rule, right? So the derivative of sine is cosine of xy times the derivative of the inside. So it's the derivative of the first, which is 1, times the second, plus the first, which is x, times the derivative of the second, which is dy dx. So, uh, recognizing that is key and then like you distribute so boom 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 there it is then you want to get everything with the dy dx on one side by itself so these are my solutions so uh, I just skipped some steps so subtracting this piece here over here that puts us here right and then because you can factor out dy dx then you just divide by that and that's the final answer but yeah I probably should stop uh, making videos of this test and actually start grading this test because I have to grade all of these uh, tests. All right, so I'm just grading a test here. So this one uh, is correct. I have the answer. You can't see it on the screen, but that's actually the right answer. So good stuff. Um, this one's also correct. Um, they forgot the units, but I'm giving people a break on this one because um, like I didn't specify the units in the problem. So I mean, it's kind of implied that it's feet per second, but yeah, whatever. And then let's see this one here. This is, uh, yeah, all edges of a cube are expanding at a rate of six centimeters per second. How fast is the volume changing? So this person, like many people, thought that this was the surface area, so game over, nope. But yeah, good effort. So the best way to grade tests, I find, is to grade them quickly, um, because if you grade them quickly, uh, you tend to be more lenient. Okay, I think that's enough of me grading, not so exciting. Okay, one more problem maybe. So this one's kind of interesting, find the critical numbers. So you have to take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So this person did that and they did that super correctly. So awesome work. This is kind of interesting. So they drew, they took the critical number, they plotted it on the, on the uh, sign diagram. This is called the sign diagram. Then you're supposed to plug in test points into the first derivative, but this person made a critical error, right? They plugged in the test points into the original function, which is bad. So yeah. And then they got lucky and they got the answer right here. The answer is zero, so good for them keep going this one's interesting because um, they, they took the derivative right right the derivative is correct here but um, the information given is wrong see it says a giant snowball is melting so that its radius is decreasing at the rate of four inches per hour so this should be dr dt equals negative four in fact maybe maybe I'll write it in for this person whoever this person is so yeah so they should have had that uh, and then they need dv dt when r is 5. That should be that should be a v there, right? That should be a v. 
and then r equals 5. So that's what they need. So uh, they messed up there, but it looks like they did some work. It's worth 10 points, so, you know, good effort. So. Oh, let's just keep going. So this one they had to use the mean value theorem for the function x squared on this interval. So basically they just have to solve for c. They have to use this equation to solve for c. So they took the derivative, correct, 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 correct. Boom, perfect, perfect, good stuff. Let's look at this one. So here you have to break it up and take the derivative um, twice. So they broke it up, so they knew what they were doing. It's funny, people tend to do that. They, they bring stuff upstairs. Um, it's just easier, I think, to subtract. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half, and then you just get x to the negative 1 half. But instead, they brought it up. Oh, I see what they did. They added wrong. Look, 1 half plus negative 1, that's not 3 halves, right? So otherwise, I think this person um, would have been, well, I don't know. I don't know if they would have been correct. I don't know if that's true. So this derivative is correct for this incorrect function. And then they just kind of, yeah, so I don't know. That's just not great, but it's only worth five points. Uh, and then here we want the critical numbers. So it says show all work, but I think in class I wrote don't worry about it. Because it's hard to show the work for stuff like this. So there's no CNs here, so nope. That's correct. So two is the critical number, right? It has a sharp edge. Let's turn the page, let's keep going. This one has a critical number here. Boom, good stuff. Good, good. This is a cusp. So if you graph this, it looks like this. I mean, let me graph it for you. So it looks like that, it looks like a little bird. So it has a cusp, so it's not differentiable there. But that number is in the domain of the function, so that actually is a critical number. I'm going kind of fast because this video is probably going to be super long. Um, Rawls theorem, you can't apply it here. No, right, because it's not differentiable. And nope, that's, it's, it's no, but it's for the wrong reason. This function is actually differentiable on 310 because on 310, um, it's just a straight line, right? This, this is the absolute value function shifted to the left, 28 units. So on 310, this is 3, this is 10. It's just it's just a straight line, so it's beautiful and it's differentiable. So uh, the answer is no, you can't use Rawls, but this is not why, because it is differentiable. The reason you can't use Rawls is if you plug in 3, you get 31. Here, I'll do it. If you plug in 3, you get 31. And if you plug in 10, you get 38. And then f of 3 is not equal to uh, f of 10. So um, these are different, so no, you can't use Rawls. So kind of an interesting take there. Same thing here. The answer is no, but not for this reason, right? Um, the answer is no because it's not continuous at uh, pi over 2, right? So the graph of tangent has infinitely many vertical asymptotes. But we just care about what's going on between 0 and pi. So so here's, here's, uh, here's pi, and here's 0. Right, and then here's tangent like this, looks something like this. So on zero pi, you're here, and so there's a discontinuity at pi over two, and pi over two is in this interval, so so things fail. So it's no because it's not continuous, and that's the whole test. So um, yeah, fun stuff. Okay, so this is what it looks like when I make tests. Um, so it's kind of messy, maybe. I don't know if I have the best uh, coding skills. If you don't know what this is, this is LaTeX. Uh, it's a typesetting uh, program. So I use a template uh, where it automatically gives me the points and stuff. So first thing you have to do is get rid of a lot of questions. This is an old test, and it covers uh, some stuff with multivariable uh, functions. So this test is only on vector-valued functions. So this is gone. Uh, this is gone. This is gone. This, this level curve stuff is not on the test. I'll leave it and I'll change it, leave it and change it, leave it and change it, mm, leave it and change it. Uh, well, what do we have here? Velocity, that'll be on their test, I'm sure. Uh, unit tangent vector, principal unit normal vector, curvature, curvature, yep. So now I just have to make up new test questions or modify old ones. Really uh, exciting times. Oh, buddy, one, one. All right, I finished uh, making the Calc 3 test, so it is time to make breakfast. So I finally finished making breakfast, time to eat. Made some eggs, toast, cheese, and you're supposed to eat vegetables, so I threw some stuff on the plate. This is a book that um, someone asked me to review. It's called Linear Algebra Done Right, so I think I'll eat breakfast and check out this book. It's supposed to be 
a really, really interesting approach um, to linear algebra. So I'm almost done eating, but I read the preface to this book, both the preface to the uh, instructor and the student, and wow, I am totally pumped about this book. This book is awesome so far. Um, yeah, I'm going to read a lot more of it before I do a review on this book, but again, the book is Linear Algebra Done Right. Uh, so far, really, really interesting. I think that's it. I'm going to spend some time reading this book. Uh, the book is Linear Algebra Done Right by Sheldon Axler. I'm going to go through it and make some notes, and yeah, that's it. Take care.